Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed all the sessions so far. Um, my name is Fereshte Furuk. I'm the founder and executive director of Code to Inspire, first computer coding school for guards in Afghanistan. Um, today, I'm going to talk about um, the journey of myself and my life as a refugee and the woman in technology in Afghanistan. And then also um, to talk about what really inspired me to think about um, creating Code to Inspire and really push for gender equality in STEM in Afghanistan. Um, so um, I was born as a refugee in Iran. My parents unfortunately left Afghanistan early 80s, um, went to Iran and I was born there um, as a refugee. And I know that a lot of, um, of Afghans um, who were born as a refugee in other countries, they faced a lot of discriminations, backlashes, because um, most of the time when you are in a country that um, you are a refugee, uh, people tend to think that you're here to, you know, grab the opportunities from them. You are going to a burden in the community. And unfortunately, um, those kind of circumstances makes you to really hide your real identity and think about who you are. Um, for me, accessing education was um, certainly one of the important thing that I was denied to access because I was a refugee. But I can say that I was fortunate enough that I could, I could finish my high school in Iran. And then we moved to Afghanistan early 2002 um, in Herat, where my parents are from. Um, I was able to get my bachelor in computer science in, tech, um, in Herat University. Um, and then I went to Germany. Um, I got my master's in um, uh, Technical University of Berlin. Uh, went back to Herat and taught as a computer science professor um, for about three years in the university. So I can say that um, certainly my life journey as a refugee and the woman in technology um, has many ups and downs. Uh, when I was a student in computer science, um, there were not a lot of women like me in the class. And so the participation of women in technology was very few. And that was something that um, made me to think about how I can, you know, and push for that and invite more women and girls to come and join computer science. But also because I was very outspoken, I participated in a lot of um, activities in the community. Um, and you know that like, unfortunately, still in Afghanistan, when there are women who are well-spoken, outspoken, um, they tend to receive, you know, backlashes. Uh, pushbacks and threats within the community. Um, and that's what I faced. Um, when I was a professor in the university um, and, um, and taught computer science, um, I've noticed that there's a still a lack of women um, in the classroom. And even though the participation of women was also not much, um, and the girls tend to be shy, they were a little bit scared of, you know, participate in extracurricular activities and also like within the university context and outside of the university. Um, there weren't much a lot of opportunity for them, you know, to participate and grow their skills. Um, unlike the men, which they had the freedom of movement and they were able to travel and to go to different places um, to work on different projects. So when I came um, to the U.S. 2012, um, I was really thinking about how I can give back to my community because um, empowering women through technology was always my passion. Um, and that made me to think about um, establishing Code to Inspire as the first computer coding school for girls in Afghanistan 2015. Uh, really, there is three important pillar of the work that we do. Um, first is um, we provide a very safe and secure educational environment for the young ladies um, because we want to gain the trust of the family. And um, I know that like a lot of women uh, go through a lot of verbal and sexual harassments, not only within the in educational institutes, but also even outside in the workplace. So providing such a space that when the girls come, 
they feel very comfortable, they feel themselves, they can raise their hands, ask questions, they don't be afraid of being, um, you know, silence um, was really important to me because that also like helped them to be creative because when you have a peace of mind and you have a space that you can do whatever you want without being questioned, that's how you become creative. That's how you become empowered and you can be innovative and create ideas. Um, so that was for me certainly a very important factor. And then we provide the school for free. Um, and the reason is that um, a lot of the girls come from a challenging financial background and we don't want to make it as a problem for them um, not accessing um, you know, equal resources. So we offer the school for free. And the third, which is the most important pillar of the work we do, um, is to kind of like what kind of technical skills we can teach these young ladies that it can be translated into working opportunities. Either they can be hired in the local community or we can outsource projects to them from outside um, or that like they want to be entrepreneur, um, create their own startups and hire more women. Uh, with that being said, um, um, I uh, registered Code to Inspire in the US uh, when we started. Um, I ran a campaign, online campaign, um, and I fundraised. Um, we raised about $22,000 and we received 20 laptops in kind donations from Overstock. Um, so, with that money and with the laptops, which we sent it, uh, the school opened November 2015. Um, we started with 50 girls. Um, and up to now, we've educated more than 250 girls in our different coding and graphic design class. So Code to Inspire itself, it's a one year after school um, coding program. And um, the school is right now only in Herat and um, we have a physical location. We have mentors who are teaching our girls in person. Um, the school is open from early 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, with different schedules. Um, the classes that we have are different classes in regarding of coding and graphic design. We offer mobile app development class, um, both for Android and iOS. Um, we offer game design, which we focus on Unity. Um, we offer graphic design, um, web development, which we focus mainly on uh, WordPress. And recently, actually, we, which is very exciting for us, we added uh, a blockchain uh, cryptocurrency class um, that it's mainly uh, geared towards um, Ethereum blockchain, smart contracts, decentralized apps. Um, and so far, I can say that like we graduated about 100 girls from our classes. And um, with the data we have, about 60% um, of our graduates actually found job within the community with what they've learned from the school. 10% of our graduates uh, became entrepreneur. They raised funds and created their own companies. Um, and um, we've outsourced about 40 projects worth of $27,000 uh, to our students. And we are talking about the girls that they've never touched a computer, never been online, um, never had a basic phone, but now they're able to translate all those um, skills into um, uh, money for themselves. And um, these are the girls that they get paid like the least amount of like a project's worth of $50 to a project which is worth of a $300, $400. And some of them are actually making more than the um, average income monthly salary in Afghanistan, which is $150. So they're making double or triple than the family member um, in the house. We also, um, I can say that like beside creating this ecosystem that we can give the girls an opportunity to um, create um, work for themselves and, and, and become financially independent, um, we are also like um, focused a lot on social impact projects. Um, we try to find certain problem in the community and see how we can create a solution for it. Either it can be a game or it can be a mobile app. Um, and so far we've created more than 50 um, games and apps. You can check our Google Play stores and iTunes and you can download all the games and apps that you're interested in. 
Um, I can say one of the exciting games that actually we developed, and I think Leila Azizi, one of our students, is going to talk about it more later today in the session, um, was the Afghan Hero Girl, which we really wanted to um, bring a diversity and inclusion into the gaming. When we look at all the superheroes, they were men. And we wanted to create a superhero, you know, to come from our culture and also be a woman so that when the young girls play this game, they look at her and they be inspired and they think, oh, wow, I can also be a superhero um, and um, make an example for that. Um, and we were um, so excited to see that a lot of people downloaded the game. We had a lot of feedbacks, great comments, and uh, people were very excited for that. So we understand how it is important to create something that resonates with people from your culture, but also encourage them to, you know, use technology into their day-to-day -day lives. Um, also, we do have a lot of great stories, inspiring stories of, of students. Like we had one of our graphic design students who we rented her a laptop. Um, she, um, we presented her work to a company in the US. They really liked her work. They gave her a um, bunch of works that she do and she'd get paid and she was able to buy a laptop for herself. So now she's not only making money for herself, but also she empowered herself and she invested in her career. She bought a laptop and she's very excited to, you know, um, work more and inspire more girls. So in a nutshell, I can say the work we do is certainly a very grassroots we are doing something um, that is very revolutionary in a way that we are going to change the perspective of the community towards women, not only in technology, but also to be a decision maker. Once a woman or a girl um, can be financially independent, she has a voice that she can bring into the table in the family, and she can be a part of decision making. So that's what we do. It's not only about um, you make money. It's about your voice being heard, your voice be at the top of the table. You will be one of the women who can take a decision in the room that might be a lot of men. So that's something that we are trying to push for it. And we're very excited to see that we've built such an opportunity for the girls in, in a country that most of the time they're being deprived of accessing education or workforce. So I can um, and um, my talk with the saying from Rumi, which all of you know, Thirteen's version of Farsi, a poet who says, where there is ruin, there's hope for a treasure. And I think it's really resemble and resonant with me, um, being a refugee and a woman from Afghanistan. And I can say that from the shattered lives of refugees and um, shattered lives of women, um, can come treasure if we know where to find it. And for me, those treasures are the girls in Afghanistan. And by investing in them, we are building Afghanistan 2.0, where um, there's no, uh, where there not no longer going to be any gender, economic, digital, and wage divide. And that's what we are pushing for. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to answer if there's any question.